Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles Sabans. We want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Bro Show. We will cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic, debates, entertainment, and we'll give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today we have a very serious show for you guys. Before we get into it, please make sure you like the video uh, and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want today's full show before it comes out, it is streaming for free on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We have that pinned in the comments section below. Let me get into this topic here. Um, where do I even begin with this topic? This morning, I woke up um, and I op opened up my Instagram. As you guys know, currently in the UK, so that's the reason you see this uh, particular setup. So a lot of the games coming on in the states come on pretty pretty late. So I don't watch a lot of the games because it's too late. I'm not going to be going to bed at five o'clock in the six o'clock in the morning um, to watch a regular season game. So unless it's an important game. So I woke up this morning and I open up my phone and I look at my Instagram. And when I open up the phone, I see an image uh, slash video of Draymond Green. Warriors are there playing a game. Draymond Green is being defended by Yusuf Nurkic, a member of the Suns. And I think he's somewhere out at the perimeter near the three-point line. He's backing him down. And he's getting physical with him, but not really physical, just like touching him. And I think in the process of that, his hand kind of tugged on his jersey. And then Draymond Green, in his typical un uh, emotional, unstable self, turns around and swings. And I don't know if it was a slap punch. Catches uh, Yusuf Nurkic right across the face. Uh, he goes to the floor. I immediately go on the community uh, section of our channel. And I put up a post. And the, the following post read. Two weeks ago, when Draymond Green assaulted Rudy Gobert and choked him, it was all jokes. They don't even let police do that. And people were there laughing and defending it. Now this. I blame the people that have defended him all these years and these soft NBA players that never chin-checked him. He needed to run up on Ron Artest or Marcus Moore Sr. And that would have been the last time he did that. He needs to be suspended for like 25 games. That man is clearly emotionally unstable. Then some people said, oh, Marcus Moore Sr. is a bad example because I saw Marcus Moore Sr. and Draymond Green get into a tussle. Marcus Moore flung through Draymond Green to the floor. Draymond, Draymond Green walked up, stood up and started talking. And, and there was nothing. There was no, I'm coming for it. There was nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, and to me, Draymond looks like someone that picks and chooses. So what happened? I was waiting to see what some of the bigger names in sports had to say. And I came across a soundbite uh, from Jay Williams. And Jay Williams recently did a sit down on ESPN First Take today to discuss this very issue. And, and thus far today, Jay, Jay Williams has been the only person that has had the courage to call it exactly like he sees it. Now, as you guys know, prior to this. There was an incident that I aforementioned when Draymond Green once again took it upon himself to do some out-of-pocket outlandish stuff where there was a scuffle that took place on the court between the Warriors and I believe the Timberwolves. Rudy Gobert jumps in to try to separate players. He wasn't doing nothing egregious. Draymond Green comes out of nowhere, runs behind him, jumps on his back. Imagine a clown you gotta be to run and jump on somebody's back and starts chokeholding him and dragging him across the court. When that news initially broke, Stephen A. Smith was one of the people that thought it shouldn't have been a serious suspension. He thought 10 games would have been too much. He thought that would have been a grease. He said it should have been like two or three or something like that. So today, when Jay Williams visited ESPN First Take and he had a chance to speak into the mic, he, he essentially checked Stephen A. Smith right to his face for constantly defending Draymond Green's bull you-know-what. So for those of you who didn't hear that exchange, I want to quickly play it for you now. And then we're going to come back and continue on with the show. Take a listen to what Stephen A. Smith had to say here. Draymond Green is going to get suspended for about 10 games, minimum. It's coming. I hope you brace yourself. I love Draymond. Can't excuse it. He apologized. I can respect that. That was a flagrant two. He definitely should have been ejected. But we all know what's going to come down. 
we know that the league office is going to meet this morning. I can tell you right now, through my sources, they're meeting as we speak. Right now. Right now, doggy. They're meeting right now. This is not going to be a Joe Dumas decision. This is not going to be uh, just a committee decision. Adam Silver, the commissioner of the National Basketball Association, is going to be directly involved with the decision that comes down involving Draymond Green. He's been warned on numerous occasions. Um, I went off about how some of it, I thought, over the years has been unfair. But nevertheless, his reputation is his reputation. He was warned on numerous occasions. He was suspended five games already this year. And now here we are with this. They are going to bring the hammer down. And I'm going to say, and I'm going to say this, and I hope Draymond is watching this. The worst thing that could have possibly happened, believe it or not, to Draymond Green was that sound from Nurkic. When a player mm -hmm. sits there and says, quote, I don't know what's wrong with him. They're trying to imply you have a problem. And there's nobody in the position to disagree with Nurkic. He's the one that got hit. He sat up there and joked, I'm glad he didn't choke me. Now, to me personally, it makes me uncomfortable to hear stuff like that because you're talking about anger management issues and you're saying, I'm glad he didn't choke me, and then you're saying that's not a part of the game, and you say, I don't know what's wrong with him. Unfortunately, on this particular day, I can't imagine a soul that's in a position to protect Draymond Green, to defend him, I'm sorry, not protect him, defend him. I can't. Nobody can. He can come up with whatever explanation he wants, and I'm not saying because I would never call Draymond a liar, okay, because I think he's as honest as they come. But it doesn't matter. Appearances matter. What we witnessed mattered. And you dropped them. And so you know what they're going to do. You know what's coming next, right? Mm -hmm. That drop is going to be compared to the Jordan Poole drop and the practice video that we were never supposed to see. And all of these things are going to be used as ammunition to accentuate and buffer the point that this is a repeat, repeat, repeat offender, that he has very serious problems, and that the NBA needs to come down on him. That's what they're going to say. And there is nobody that can come to Draymond Green's at defense at this particular moment. Joe Dumas in the league office, like I said, they're meeting right now. I don't know what the suspension is. I can guarantee you there's going to be a suspension. Mm -hmm. And I believe, I believe it's going to be a very, very hefty one. So now, in totality, if he gets suspended, he would have paid $3 million in suspension fines to the league. $3 million throughout the course of his career. By the way, that's, that, that's, that, that's after, you know, that's before. I mean, that means $6 million, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> his tax. That's yeah. unbelievable, yeah. though. Right? Glad you brought think that about that. up. Um, you know, when we had the chokeout incident with Rudy Gobert, I came on the show and I said I thought it deserved a 10-game suspension. I disagree with and you. And you disagree with yes. me. Because I want to take a hard stance. I get tired of people being Draymond Green apologists or enabling that type of behavior. And one of the things that's critical for me when it comes to Draymond, I actually think it should be 15 to 20 games. We'll see where it's going to be, whether that's 10, 15, or 20. I'm just speculating. I'm just Agreed? saying I think it's going to be a minimum of 10. Okay. It's also how you follow things up. So... You know, after the first incident with Rudy Gobert, I and mean, we didn't get back to the Demonis Sabonis you know, stomp on his chest, but after Rudy Gobert, he said the consensus amongst all of us is that I'm going to be me no matter what, and that's not going to change. Stephen A., when I listened to him in the postgame presser after this incident again where he says, oh, this is just bad luck, it wasn't bad luck. You intentionally hit the man in the face. I'm a huge Draymond Green fan. I understand how important he is. But to me, like, it has to be a very, very firm hand on him because it seems to me that it doesn't matter what the league's policy is on him. He j it feels to me that he feels entitled, Stephen A. He comes across as entitled, as if, okay, well, I did it. You know, I don't really apologize for things I don't really mean to do, but you know, I guess I'm apologizing, but that was, wasn't intentional. It was bad luck. And... It, and the relationship with Joe Dumars, I'm glad you said it goes above Joe Dumars. And I think Joe Dumars is great at his job. 
But that relationship, it, it feels like Joe Dumars needs to be recused from that decision making on it because of their relationship. Because Draymond's called Joe Dumars a father figure. Yeah, but before. That doesn't, and I, I, I'm, that doesn't I'm just mean that Dumars has any agree. problem making the decision. Agree. Okay. But perception is reality, right? But it and, depends. If he, I mean, you got to give. I mean, he, he, what if he suspends him 20 games? Okay. You see what I'm saying? I'm I, just, I saying. just, I, I, to me, right. it doesn't feel like there's been a firm hand on the way Draymond has been handled throughout the course of time. So you heard what the exchange was. Here are my thoughts on this. And by the time you're seeing this, you've probably done a live that I suggest you guys go check out. <sighs> you know, I was telling one of my, uh, one of our viewers this the other day that I'm starting to get sick of doing this job. I really am. Not because I don't enjoy talking sports, but because I feel like the people talking sports are just all capping. I feel like people are not really saying what they believe. I feel like people are, you know, one of the things I'm happy about now that I look at it in hindsight is the fact that we've been able to grow our platform afar, from afar, excuse me, and not interact with the people that we talk about. And I think the blessing in that is that you don't pull your punches. When you're connected to, to, to the people you're talking about, you're always going to look for ways to pull punches. But in our case, we just tell it like it is. I don't care about losing a relationship I never had. Right? I don't care about that. I don't care about offending someone that was never my friend. When I know that I'm telling you exactly what I think because I'm beholden to the audience not to that person, not to that relationship. Do you know why? Because if that relationship goes away, excuse me, if the audience goes away, is that person going to be paying my bills? I don't think so. So your opinion really doesn't matter that much. Doesn't really matter. And your friendship doesn't really matter that much if we're being honest about it. And I've been noticing people just tippy-toeing around the situation. I've been looking at some NBA guys playing like, nah, well, you know. Like nobody wants to keep it real and I'm sick of you dudes. I got to be honest, man. I'm sick of this fake like politically correct oh let me not say this because i know him and he knows me and i i don't want to like yo where are we in high school i thought your job if you're talking sports aren't you supposed to say what you think now i understand that it's a human component you want to have relationships you want to maintain relationships i understand all of that but when something is clearly self-explanatory like a particular situation like this it becomes nauseating to see people take the position that you know is inherently wrong. Stephen A. Smith, is he's talking, he's also thinking about relationships. It's always about defending this person. Defend what about the audience? This is my qu What about the audience? What about keeping it... You see, I... Uh, what is it? I was recently listening to a segment from Gil's Arena yesterday. Gil Gilbert Arenas has a huge show. Y'all know that. And usually when we do, when we discuss Gilbert Arenas, we usually, um, I usually send him a text message to say, hey, listen, I said this about you, I said that about you. So he's not blindsided me to do that. Uh, hopefully I remember to do it. But anyway, I remember yesterday, Gilbert Arenas was essentially saying, hey, you know, after the Lakers won the playing tournament, he goes, this is the definite reason uh, that, Mike, uh, that LeBron James is the GOAT. And I'm watching Gilbert Arena say this. I'm watching him say this. And I'm like, just three weeks ago or so, or whatever, a month or so ago, two months ago, whatever, you and I sat down on the show and, and I asked you, who is the GOAT between LeBron and Jordan? And you said nobody can ever touch Jordan. No one. I also asked them. There were there were listeners there. I said, who's the I said, uh, um, you do not put LeBron ahead of Kobe. He goes, what does LeBron do better? No, what does Kobe do better than LeBron? This is what I, that's what he asked me. I said, Kobe Bryant is a better offensive player. It's not even close. He said, okay. I said, he's a better defensive player. It's not even close. He said, okay. I said, he's more clutch. He said, okay. I said, he's mentally tougher. He said, okay. But then when we get on these shows, it's a totally different thing. And I, and I wonder, I sincerely wonder, why, why, why are we doing this? Now, of course, you're going to have some people out there 
that really dislike the content that we produce because it's anti-LeBron, so they're never going to say that. They'll be like, oh, Gilbert Arenas cooked you. Uh, what about all these other points? No, nah, we're not going to talk about that because we're idiots, so we're not going to do that. <laughs> Gilbert Arenas asked me a question, which players plays in the 90s or something like that? I didn't give him all the answers that he wanted. They totally exclude everything else I just told you guys. And somebody got cooked. These are the idiots of the world. The jealous idiots of the world. But back to this, man. I'm getting sick of sports media. I got to be honest with you. Not enough people are keeping it real. And it seems like it's all about the interests. Oh, let me. It's all about the relationships. Excuse me. I got to say this to maintain that. It's like, yo, might as well just go. Just be a politician. Just be a politician. This is what politicians do. That's why I can't stand politics. That's why nobody likes politics. Who likes politics? Nobody likes politicians. Nobody. Politicians are weasels, slimy we. Nobody likes them. Across the globe. I took a taxi the other day. The guy, he's from the UK. First words, first two, three sentences, he starts complaining about politicians in the UK. You meet another guy from Indian, he's complaining about politicians. You meet another guy from Nigeria, he's complaining. You meet every, everybody hates politics, so just go be one. Always trying to triangulate. Let me say this to, I'm cool with him, but I can also be cool with them too. So I'm cool with everybody. I don't want to ruffle any feathers, so I'm going to just say this. So I'm, I'm cool with everybody. Man, it's sad. It's really sad, and I am grateful that I don't know these people. Actually, I used to think, oh, maybe it's not. No, I don't care. Because if it means that I have to comp compromise what I actually think, you can keep your, your relate. I don't give a damn. I'm not, I didn't grow up in my life trying to be other dudes' friends. I'm sorry. That's not what I'm here for. So to me, man, it's disappointing, and I'm glad that Jay Williams seems to be the only one with the balls to say what needs to be said about this subject. Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. We catch you guys on the next show. Peace.